When I say the word ADHD, you often think of dopamine because it's seen as a dopamine issue, except this isn't completely true and I'll explain why. Dopamine plays a big role in ADHD, except ADHD is simply not just a dopamine issue, it is far more complex than that. The primary symptoms of ADHD are impulsivity, hyperactivity, and inattention, with secondary symptoms like anxiety, hypermotionality. So ADHD is essentially this group of symptoms, except multiple things can lead to this group of symptoms. You should look at ADHD as a spectrum in which you'll be people at both ends of the spectrum, in which some people have it worse and some people have it better. So the first First is methylation, which is basically our body's ability to form and recycle methyl groups. Methylation does like a thousand different things, except some of the core things it does do. It recycles and it produces neurotransmitters, DNA repair, reduces oxidative stress, reduces homocysteine, helps detox heavy metals, and impacts COMT, the enzyme that breaks down the monoamine neurotransmitters. It's a very complex system that we're just now beginning to understand its implications towards brain chemistry and overall health functionality and multiple people have mutations and genes that affect the methylation process that leads to outcomes like ADHD or other poor health outcomes some of these mutations can cause lower neurotransmitter production excessive oxidative stress or an increase in homocysteine which can all lead to ADHD symptoms so some common methylation minerals that make a big difference is vitamin b1 b3 b6 b9 and B12, particularly folate and vitamin B12 are very important for the process, as well as magnesium, potassium, zinc. How do you know if you're one of those people that suffer from methylation issues? The best thing to do would just be to test your genetics and see if you are one of those people with a mutation towards your methylation process. And then as soon as you know, you can do something about it. That's a beautiful thing of awareness is as soon as you're aware, you can change it. So I would say to do a genetic test, you can do them fairly cheap for hundred bucks and they can give you a lot of insight to why things have happened in your life in certain ways or why you respond to things in certain ways. Nutrient deficiencies vastly impact methylation as well overall ADHD symptoms. Some common ones that you could be low in are magnesium, vitamin D3, and zinc. Magnesium bar none has made such a massive difference to my ADHD symptoms where it has been one of the strongest things to lowering my ADHD symptoms, which is so annoying because it's such a boring answer. Magnesium is huge when it comes to ADHD and most people with ADHD are deficient in magnesium for one reason or another. And this is very well documented in clinical studies and it's definitely something to be aware of and to supplement. Magnesium deficiency can exacerbate the common symptoms of ADHD like inattention, anxiety, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. A sufficiency of magnesium, can lower stress, promote DNA repair, promote over 300 coenzyme reactions, improve ATP, so basically your mental energy, improve hormonal health, neurotransmitter production, among many, many other things. Yeah, vitamin D3, a little sunshine, a little sunlight, makes such a massive difference to ADHD, and this is very well documented also. Vitamin D deficiency is commonly the cause for SAD, seasonal affective disorder, as well as it weakens your immune system, lowers your cognitive function, it impacts your hormonal health, it promotes excess oxidative stress, it basically does everything wrong for your body that you could imagine, so it makes perfect sense to supplement vitamin D3 or just to make sure you get adequate sunlight when you can. A sufficiency improves mood, improves your hormonal function, improves your immune system, promotes cognitive function, as well as zinc, the essential mineral that is essential for ADHD, that functions as a weak dopamine reuptake inhibitor, similar to how Ritalin works. It's very important for a whole host of things, particularly cognitive function and immune system function. Obviously, other vitamins and minerals play a big part in ADHD except a commonly overlooked part is dietary intervention and dietary sensitivity. Diet is always tough. They always say in bodybuilding that 20% of the results come from the gym and 80% of it comes from diet because diet is paramount. For instance, dairy. A lot of people are very sensitive to dairy. I'm one of these people and consuming dairy to those that are sensitive can exacerbate and worsen those primary ADHD symptoms. So it makes very good sense to eliminate dairy. And if you are sensitive to dairy, you might want to try to consume raw 
unpasteurized dairy that contains the enzymes to help you break it down that don't get destroyed in the heating process and gluten is another thing to be aware of and to limit as well because that can exacerbate your ADHD symptoms overall one of the best diets for ADHD would be a high fat moderate protein and a low carb lowering or eliminating carbs will greatly improve your cognitive function sugar sugar basically worsens ADHD like shocker there who would have thought except chronic intake of sugar can cause down regulation of the dopamine d2 receptors because obviously you ingest sugar and you get such an immediate sugar spike except you know what goes up must come down and then you crash afterwards where you feel worse than you did before you originally ingested the sugar so sugar can be very detrimental to adhd and this is very well documented in a lot of studies so with adhd you definitely want to limit your sugar intake which can be hard except the workaround to this would be to consume sugar from fruits so you can get that sweet taste without that strong shock to your system. If you wanna improve your health in any way, you wanna eliminate seed oils immediately because they are the true enemy. They've even been shown in studies to increase oil chance mortality, so increase the chance of you dying quite significantly. Neurotransmitter hyperfunctionality, which I know is a big word. Basically, it's when neurotransmitters don't work in the way that they should. They hypofunction, they don't hyperfunction. Glutamate is the major excitatory neurotransmitter that is implicated in the etiology of a lot of psychiatric mental disorders in which it can cause and worsen the symptoms of these disorders. Glutaminergic hypofunctionality can represent a lot of the primary ADHD symptoms, even in particular the receptor, the GRM5, is very much implicated in ADHD and other psychiatric disorders because downstream it affects dopamine. So everything is very much an interlinking system where one thing affects the other. Even look at fast harass time, it's currently in clinical trials for treatment of ADHD just because it's an MGLUR1 agonist. So it can help reduce glutaminergic abnormalities that are implicated in ADHD. So there is some evidence there. Next is norepinephrine, which is very much the big brother of ADHD that's responsible responsible for your fight or flight system. It's also responsible for motivation, for memory. Dysfunction of norepinephrine in the prefrontal cortex can cause a lot of the primary ADHD symptoms. And even if you look at it, like an, a lot of the off-label treatments for ADHD affect the adrenic system, the norepinephrine system, like caffeine, nicotine, phenylparastam, ginkgo biloba, ginseng, some other psychotonic compounds like methylphenidate and amphetamine. Except the biggest downside about increasing norepinephrine is that you're increasing norepinephrine in which it activates your fight or flight system. So you have your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. Serotonin also plays an important role with ADHD, except more so the calming, because serotonin is inhibitory. It inhibits, not excites. It's useful for reducing hyperactivity, for increasing attention, so reducing inattention, and reducing impulsivity, except there are caveats to serotonin because serotonin a lot of time can be the antithesis of dopamine where you increase serotonin you decrease dopamine vice versa this isn't always the case except it's usually the case so you definitely want to improve serotonin in a certain way so you can maximize the upside and minimize the downside as well as serotonin is very good for quieting your dmn which is default mode network which is basically your brain's capacity to just like daydream and get lost in your thoughts so increasing serotonin can reduce that so you're just much more in the moment and you're not so lost in your head thinking about this or that you're engaged with what's happening in the present moment because probably one of the worst things about ADHD is just overthinking everything so increasing serotonin can vastly help reduce this so overall it's good to experiment with different nootropic supplements that help with ADHD that have been shown to do so experiment with them take notes on them hypothesize why they work for you they don't work for you then experiment further and test your hypothesis one thing that no one responds well to is heavy metal toxicity and heavy metals are much more common in our environments and getting more common as the decades go by heavy metal toxicity can cause a lot of the adhd symptoms and worsen them particularly in the critical periods during embryonic development in the womb in which you're extra sensitive to external compounds because you're going through critical periods of gestation and development. And a lot of heavy metal exposure during gestation can cause ADHD later in life. So some heavy metals like magnesium, lead, candomim, mercury, bismuth, it's always good to do a heavy metal test if you do think you have been exposed to heavy metals at one point or you're exposed to them currently. 
Just see where you are with those levels. And then if you are high with heavy metals, go through your practitioner. They can guide you through the detox process. It is very much not as simplistic as everyone makes it out to be. It is a lot more complex because we are complex. So it makes sense that a psychiatric disorder would be complex as well. That being said, increasing dopamine is one of the best ways to decrease the severity of ADHD symptoms. It is probably the 80% to the 20%, except it matters how and where you increase dopamine the most, whether you increase dopamine in the prefrontal cortex or the nucleus accumbens, this makes a massive difference. And I'm gonna talk about this in a future video about the best sustainable way to increase dopamine for ADHD for the best symptom relief. So sit tight for that video. And I've done a few other videos on ADHD, so if you're interested in that, check it out, it should be on the screen right now.